Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. Art and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister, our expert in all things medical. Dr. Liz, you are a wonderful, wonderful resource for us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Uh, good to see you as always. Uh, I have a question to pose to you today. Um, uh, I've uh, adopted uh, food born now, a, a whole food, plant based uh, diet. I cut out oils, and that's not even the, the area I want to talk about. And I have wonderful results. I have no pains in my knees anymore, and what have you. But also, um, uh, the one uh, thing that I did do from time to time is use a uh, sweetener in my coffee in the morning. And um, I was using a, a Splenda, the little yellow tablet thing. Uh, years and years and years ago, I used uh, that the pink one that was just awful. Uh, that was just too sweet. Uh, yeah. But I've just begun because I'm so uh, uh, into plant-based uh, product that I'm, uh, what is it? I think it's called Stevia Stevia. It's a, a, a green package. Yeah. And, yes, um, there's a couple that are more natural than others. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that going to buy me anything or am I just kidding myself? Are they all bad or are none of them bad? Do they food? You want to think your your body and to think I'm sure anyway. Can you give us the skinny on artificial sweeteners? <laughs> I sure can. I sure can. Well, uh, like several other topics that we've talked about, it's the it's controversial. The science is conflicting. The artificial sweeteners. So I don't consider, for example, stevia or monk fruit. I would consider those natural sweeteners. However, because they are so much sweeter than regular sugar, there can potentially be other issues. So we'll get to those. We'll talk about those. The artificial sweeteners, you talked about the pink and the blue and the yellow, uh, the sucralose, the aspartame, the, the, there's so many. Uh, they are approved by the FDA. They're considered, they're called GRAS, generally regarded as safe. That is the... Uh, title that they are given, okay? So it really, a little bit depends who you ask. Those products are, they start at 200 times as sweet as normal sugar. Mm. And it goes up to thousands of times sweeter than regular sugar. And they are more ubiquitous than you might think. They're in, uh, for example, they're in toothpaste, they're in chewing gum, uh, they're in a lot of products. So even someone who says, well, I would never put that pink packet of saccharin into my iced tea or whatever it may be, uh, they still, it's, we're still sometimes ingesting uh, tiny amounts, hopefully tiny amounts uh, of these kinds of artificial sweeteners. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I recently got off of whatever it was, I think it was the blue package. And I went to regular sugar. Hmm. And I, you know, I don't know why I did it just because I, I wanted to get more natural, not because I read anything that uh, was a big revelation. But is sugar um, better for you generally in general health terms than, than these artificial sweeteners? Okay, so again, it depends who you ask. What I will tell you is that regular sugar is more caloric than the artificial sweeteners. That is why the artificial sweeteners have taken off in popularity the way they have. Oh. So the idea is that rather than, I, I forget how many teaspoons of sugar are in a can of, of regular cola, uh, but it's a lot. It looks really bad when you put that much sugar just into the glass by itself. It looks really it's like, oh my gosh, there's that much sugar in there. And that's very caloric. So the artificial sweeteners really took off in popularity a few decades ago when we started seeing all the diet products that are out there. Yeah. There, they then, the scientists then went and did studies on people who were working on losing weight and using these products. And the, the results were not what you would expect. A lot of people using diet sodas, diet products, they were not having the success that you might expect with their weight loss efforts. 
All right, so there's some theories of why that might be. One theory is that even though the artificial sweetener is not actually sugar and caloric in that way, yeah. it still can cause the body to release insulin. The perception of sweetness can cause wow. the body, the pancreas to release insulin and it can lower sensitivity to insulin. And then we have a problem. Then that's what you call insulin resistance, which can lead to prediabetes and can evolve into diabetes. So it's really not that clear if people are doing themselves a very big favor by switching from sugar to the artificial sweeteners. Right. And mm -hmm. I assume that that would hold true with diet sodas as well. Everything diet. Yep. That's sure. exactly right. Oh, diet. Yeah. 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 And when people release insulin, they put on weight. Insulin causes us to put on weight. That's why diabetes becomes such a difficult place that people can get stuck, especially mm -hmm. if they end up needing insulin, because then it's even harder to lose the weight and reverse the diabetes. So is there any kind of guidelines on if you're going to use artificial sweeteners because they have zero or no cal low calories or it's just, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, we're still in a crapshoot. <laughs> yes, it, again, it depends who you ask. So for example, I've worked with a lot of patients who are really ill, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, Lyme disease, like really, really sick patients. Mm. And it is definitely considered in that community to avoid anything uh, in the department of artificial sweeteners. They are considered to be problematic for the uh, neurological system. Again, these are people who are already pretty ill. Uh, so it's it's a little hard to say. I think you, John, I think you did good switching away from artificial sweeteners because our brains are designed to register sweetness. And nowadays mm. with artificial sweeteners, our sense of what is sweet is, is thrown way off. So it really impairs our ability, for example, to enjoy fresh fruit. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Mm. Versus something that's put in a can with sugar added or anything, any artificial sweetener added to it. So I think in that regard, you're doing yourself and your health uh, a favor. Okay. Yeah. So right now, my guilty pleasure is one pack of, uh, well, now it'll be stevia every morning. Maybe I should just forego that and all together. Or, or dial it back a little bit. I, I do encourage my patients to reduce sweetness in general. Uh, so I, I just think that that can be very, very helpful, whether it's directly because of their insulin release. I, I, the science doesn't back me up directly on that. Those are, those are the theories. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, again, yeah. thank you for clarifying it up so that we don't, I think a lot of people just think it's super safe and it's okay. You can drink as much as you want uh, uh, of various things or use as much as you want on in oatmeal or uh, other things. And uh, the answer is we don't really know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So if you can put fresh fruit or something like that and, and uh, bring your brain back to being yeah. able to tell regular sweetness, yeah. I, mm. I think that's beneficial. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.